How's it going, everyone? Welcome to a different camera angle. Just like the good old days with my camera next to my little corner of the desk. I had it propped up on a mic stand with some duct tape at the time. And yeah, this is my studio apartment. I have probably the exact same setup that most of you guys do. And I'm gonna spin that as a positive. So we're here at the desk today to discuss vocal production, just like we've done before, but we're going to be doing it in a slightly different way. We're not gonna be focusing on one specific thing like EQ or compression. We're gonna be going over the vocals of an entire track. That's gonna include EQ and compression, but it's also gonna include reverb automation, a bunch of things that I think we can cover in this song. Also, sorry for any background noise. As a lot of you know, I'm still testing the TLM 102, so consider this a real life test. And thank you to Mr. Guy Fox, who's a subscriber who gave me all the stems in order to do this video. So the way we're going to do tutorials now is through your music. If you have a song that you wanna show on the channel, if you wanna get at least a few hundred eyes on it, send me the tracks, send me the stems, and we can make content out of it. And we can get uh, just, you know, a little bit of a spotlight at least on your music. You also get a free mix out of it, which, you know, can be like a couple hundred dollars worth so seems like a good deal to me. Today we're going to be discussing a few things. We're going to go over automation and reverbs first, which I know doesn't sound like the most glamorous thing, but I promise you it's definitely the most important thing in this lesson. I specifically want to talk about how these techniques can translate to an emotional response in your listener. We get caught up in all the technical details, getting all the curves right, getting the right ratios, getting all the right kind of reverb decays, and we forget that we're trying to provoke an emotional response. And then after that, we're gonna go over our typical vocal chain with a EQ compression and all the other modulation we do after that. So let's take a look at the original mix of the song and then let's also take a look at my mix and then we're going to volume match both of them. But she keeps me sane And I feel like I'm free to realize myself My darling looks at me in those big dark eyes For a moment I feel alright It's not the meals we pick together Or the things we wear If this love is truly sick that I wouldn't dare just to be with you There's nothing in between And I know it now, I know it now My soul's been swept clean So let's hop into this Pro Tools session and get started. So first thing I want you to notice when we look at this, we've got a couple sections that have a bajillion tracks in them. And then we have two tracks that are kind of making up the majority of the song. We have the guitar. And we have the vocal. We're not the same And we rarely agree But she keeps me sane And I feel like I'm free to realize myself Today I want to specifically focus on things like vocal layering, vocal separation, and creating spaces. Now what do I mean by creating spaces? Let's go over that first, and in order to do that we're going to go over reverb. If we go to the other tab here, and you don't need to know Pro Tools in order to understand this, you just need to know kind of basic mix routing. You'll notice that we have two different kinds of reverbs. We have a main reverb, and then we have a, what I'm calling a backing verb. Basically, I have one reverb called Vox Verb that's on the main vocal right here. We'll label this one vocal. Vocac. So basically, we have one reverb here, the Vox Verb, that's going to the vocal, and then I also have the guitar going through that. And if we look at the sends, we have uh, not a lot going through it. Negative 20 dB for the vocal and, uh, you know, around negative 12 dB for the guitar. Then, if we look at the vocal itself, the vocal is not a huge vocal. The, the decay is turned down really low. We have a little bit of chorusing happening to get a little bit of that higher stereo image. And because this is on a return or auxiliary track, we have it at 100% wet. Let's hear what this sounds like. I'll pump it up to make it more um, intense. There's nothing in between, and I know it now, I know it now. My soul's been 
So it's a kind of reflective small room. It, it's relatively bright. But a, a key thing I want to point out here is whenever we're sending stuff to it, we're sending a very minute level of signal to it. Basically what I'm saying is we're emulating a pretty dry signal, adding just a little bit of liveliness to it with the verb. But in general, the idea is this vocal is right in your face. Now, all of these other tracks here, this giant one that has all the purple and this one that's kind of more of a bluish color, they're all going to the backing vocals. Now, the backing vocals are the reverb is turned up way louder. You can see on this backing vocals track here, which is all of these purple ones, uh, we're going in at negative 5 dB. So if I pull this tab here, they're all grouped together. You can see all of the different vocals that uh, Mr. Guy Fox has put inside of this track. Let's hear how this sounds like with the reverb. Right, super angelic, right? What happens if we take that reverb off? Dry, pretty much exactly what you would expect. I don't even know why I said that. It's gonna be dry. So two things with reverb, I think when it comes to a, a beginning a mix or a beginner's uh, first attempt at a mix. We tend to put reverb on the channel itself and then mix with the dry wet knob And then we also tend to put the same reverb on everything because we think it's going to give an element of cohesiveness And it can definitely do that But you can also use reverb to your advantage to separate different elements of your song And this is a perfect example of that We have this angelic choir that's clearly very separated from the audio image of the main body of the song which is the guitar and the vocals. And another thing to keep in mind when we're talking about vocal layering and kind of song and mix separation is where these things are sitting in the stereo field. The key here is that the guitar and the vocal are dead center in the stereo image. We're not the same and we rarely agree but she keeps me sane and I feel like I'm free. Now let's look at the panning of all these other tracks with this choir here. Uh, let's listen to that on its own. Right, so if you look at all these, none of them are dead center. They're all getting out of the way for the main vocal. This is another way of separating kind of auxiliary functions auxiliary parts of your songs from the main body and the meat of your song always have the main meat of your song right in the middle let's hear this in context so i say don't you know i'm the one who loves you so it's true it'll show just give me some time you're everything that's mine Cool. Another thing I want to talk about. You'll notice here that there's a, 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 a ton of these vocal layers, but they're also kind of fulfilling the same role. It's less about the individual take and more about the sum of all these takes parts. So if you look at this, there's no plugins in these. We don't need to do processing on all these. That's a great way to crash your computer. But these are all going into a routing folder. And this is something I touched on. I think it's like one of my least viewed video, partially because I'm not in focus the entire time. But anyways, rather than taking these things as individual things, uh, taking up DSP and processing power, probably crashing your computer, you can put these in a group or a routing folder. So for example, these are all Brooklyn. So for example, these are all going into a routing folder called backing vocals, and that is therefore going to our mix bus, which is ending all the way up at the end here. And that means I can just process this entire 30 track part with one EQ. And in this case, I'm adding a lot of high end and I'm adding even more high end with fresh air and I'm using it pretty aggressively because because I want to emphasize that sort of angelic bright sound. So we want to use different reverbs for auxiliary and primary parts of the songs to create different sonic landscapes. We want to make sure that the auxiliary roles are not in the center. We want the center of the stereo image to be for the main parts, i.e. in this case, the vocal and the guitar. And if you're doing a lot of vocal layering, 
you definitely want to make sure you're doing batch processing in order to save yourself some computational power uh, and um, the headache of your computer crashing and you losing all of your work. Next thing I want to talk about is automation, which yes, even in Pro Tools, you can use automation. Wow, it's not just an Ableton thing. So these little lines here are representing the volume on different parts of the song. You are probably not using Pro Tools, if I know my audience. Um, so you're gonna need to look up a, a, a tutorial about how automation works in your specific DAW. This is not a channel for understanding DAWs. It's about understanding production and mostly microphone reviews. But here's a great example. Rather than going straight to a compressor and compressing this whole signal, this part was a little bit loud and I wanted to emphasize the entrance of the main uh, guitar pattern. And looks like this one is shifted up about three decibels. But it's going to come back down on the vocal, right? Oh, I need to put the vocal in the mix. We're not the same, and we rarely agree. Subtle, because you're not listening for the change in volume of the guitar. You're listening for the vocal that just came in. So take advantage of volume automation rather than relying just uh, on a compressor. Another thing volume automation is great for is emphasizing certain phrases. And we're going to get more into this on how a compressor can further emphasize this later. Um, but check out this phrase here and see how the tail of this phrase, we added volume to emphasize what he's saying. So I say, don't you know, I'm the one who loves you so it's true, it'll show. Just give me some time, you're everything that's mine. Yeah. And we do this everywhere, uh, especially on that phrase, and especially on the end here, it's even more aggressive. I say, don't you know, I'm the one. So it kind of gives the illusion that the singer is getting closer to the microphone. It's a more intimate feeling. And in this vocal, especially the main vocal, I'm really all about trying to make him sound more intimate and more right in your face. And then you will also notice the volume automation lines on the guitar. You can see it's getting progressively louder and louder as the vocal fades away. So we can put that proverbial spotlight back on the guitar. Check that out too. It's also a clinical thing. It's also about cleanup rather than just focusing on, uh, you know, creative spotlighting and stuff like that. This little section here would, would have clipped. Volume automated down. Just don't rely on a limiter to do everything. I'm not wearing pants. And there's one other really cool effect you can do with auto automation too. Um, check out the end here, and I want you to notice the reverb tail on the main vocal. I say, don't you know, I'm the one who loves you so it's true, and I'll show, only give them the time, you're everything. Listen to that reverb tail again. I'm the time, you're everything. What I'm doing there is I'm using automation specifically on the volume level of the reverb. So you can see here, if we go back on the, the um, sends area of Pro Tools, I actually have the backing vocal reverb on the main vocal turned down to negative infinity. If we go back here, and we can watch this fader rise actually here in a second, you can see actually here it has a spike 
right at the end of his phrase, so that reverb is blending and fading into the backing vocal reverb. So we're taking the spotlight and that intimate moment that the main vocal and the guitar had, and then we're pulling it back and blending it in to kind of the ambient background that we're creating with the backing vocals. You're everything. Cool effect that you can do with automation. And remember, you can use automation for anything. You can automate compression ratios. You can automate anything that has a knob. Extremely powerful. The most powerful thing, period. Fight me. Okay, so that is automation and reverbs and trying to set up the sort of vocal ambience of your track. Again, this is kind of a general overview of everything. So let's go in to vocal chains. So let's go into this vocal chain now and talk about how we're trying to make a more intimate in your face vocal uh, that's a relatively dry vocal as well. The dryness just don't add a lot of reverb, but the in your face stuff uh, is mostly done through a couple different compressors rather than one compressor. Uh, and then this high shelf that we have here in the EQ. You can see here, I didn't really do much to his voice. Typically, whenever I'm going into these sessions and I'm working with a vocal, I'm listening for resonances that bother my ear or ring out too much or could get taxing over time. And credit where credit is due, Mr. Guy Fox had a great vocal that I didn't really feel like I needed to treat at all. And whenever I first started this, I was like, maybe I don't even put an EQ on it. Maybe I don't need it. But I did your standard 50 hertz roll off and then basically flat all the way through here. The high shelf I will explain in just a second because the high shelf pertains more to the compressors than it does the EQ. Because what I'm trying to do is bring out the breath in his vocal, the at the end of his phrases. And the way I'm doing that is through a couple compressors, both doing a medium to low amount of work. This is the Katelnikov. The Katelnikov is typically a mastering compressor, but I have it set to a vocal bus on a warm setting and then a really low compression ratio of about two and a half to one. The big thing though here is the R compressor, while it's doing a little bit more, 3.4 ratio, uh, it has a release time of about 650 milliseconds, and that's pretty long. And what we're doing is we're making sure that compression lasts long enough to let his breath fade out. So we're boosting the volume in his breath. Hey, shut up. So that release time of 650 milliseconds is essentially taking his vocal as it decays and it's boosting up that volume. Now, if I were to raise this release time even longer, let's say to like way up there, that's like, what, five seconds? Five seconds in order for the compressor to stop boosting that signal, to stop normalizing that signal. So by setting the release time to be a relatively long one, we're bringing out that breath and that breath is also being reinforced by this high shelf. And then to further push that, we have a fresh air doing what fresh air does best, while also adding a bit of noise floor. Clean. Let's listen to this phrase with the vocal chain on and without the vocal chain on, and I want to see if you can hear the differences in the breathiness of his voice. Tell me how well I did. Here's with the chain on. Are we really not the same? Are we really not the same? So bringing out that in his voice to make it sound like he's right here. <laughs> and then the other stuff is just like a de -esser and a TDR Nova doing cleanup duty in the low mids. I've got uh, just some basic kind of EQ choices, boosting up a few uh, choice characteristics in the mastering chain or the, the mix bus, if you will. Uh, it's basically just a preset called Mastering Acoustic that I modified very slightly. And then we're adding gain through this sort of, you know, mix bus virtual mastering console thing here. Insight telling me how I did, and that's it. So let's do some takeaways from this. Uh, basically, if you're going to do a lot of vocal layers, if you want vocal separation, make sure that you define the spaces through your reverb choice. If you're going to do a ton of vocal layers, make sure that the auxiliary or non-main parts are spread across the stereo image. 
use volume automation to kind of move the, the metaphorical spotlight to whatever instrument happens to be in charge at that moment and, and kind of dip the volume of the supporting roles. The biggest automation lanes for this one were the guitar because we wanted the guitar to be in service of the vocal. You don't have to EQ just for the sake of EQing. If you happen to have a vocal take you think sounds good and sits on top of the mix as it should, don't EQ it. Use multiple compressors and high shelves in order to bring out the breath in people's voices. If you're using multiple compressors, it's probably a smart idea to split the ratio. If you wanted a six to one ratio or a seven to one ratio, maybe try a three to one or a two to one on one of them and you know, a four to one or a three to one on the other. Those are it. Hopefully that was helpful. Remember, if you want to submit your music and get, you know, at least a couple hundred eyes on it um, and get a free mix out of the equation, send me an email at realaudiohaze at gmail.com. You can also send me an email there if you would like to work on a project with me. Follow me on Instagram at realaudiohaze. And with that, I will let Mr. Guy Fox play us out. Darling looks at me in those big dark eyes For a moment I feel alright It's not the meals we pick together Or the things we wear If this love is truly sick Then I wouldn't dare just to be with you There's nothing in between And I know it now now, my soul's been swept clean. So I say, hey, don't you know? I'm the one who loves you, so it's true, it'll show. Only given the time, you're everything that's mine.